and we're going to look at simple prayer practices. And so uh, I want I want this um, this class to be a lot more interactive, which means uh, y'all are going to have to actually talk, um, which may be difficult because I know Zoom, we don't have that moment where we can all kind of look around or I can stare you down and you feel like, oh, Ryan's wanting me to talk. They can't give you those nonverbals as well. So um, you'll have to, you'll have to just take it on your own to, to start talking. So I'm going to ask a simple question. What is prayer? So just first thing that comes to your mind, what is prayer? Uh, time with God. Okay, time with God. I like it. What else? What is prayer? Communing with God. Okay, communing with God. That's good. I'm trying to figure out the best way to have my controls. Um, what else? Uh, communing with God, time with God, others. Talking to God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, talking to God. Uh, what are the different you know types of prayer that you've you've heard about over time? Praise. Okay, there's prayers of praise. That's good. We forget that one sometimes. Thanksgiving. Yeah, prayers of Thanksgiving. Supplication. Yeah, supplication. That's good. Uh, intercessory prayer. That's a fun, fun word to say. All right. Uh, I want to talk about a simple form of prayer. That the uh, when we think about prayer, um, I think Deanne said this one, and it's not wrong. But often when people think of prayer. It's a time of us talking to God. And, we, and that's been one of the drums I've been really banging on uh, in these classes is prayer is simply being in the presence of God and allowing God to speak. And so a lot of times we approach prayer as a one-sided practice of conversation. So I want to kind of, I want to look at simple forms of prayer um, that is actively silent in a, in a lot of ways, or there's, there's very little going on on your end. Uh, these are simple forms of prayer. Uh, but first, we asked you, know, what is prayer? And uh, prayer is a word that describes a relationship. Um, it discipline, or disciplines of prayer provides patterns for attending to God throughout the day. And so, this is kind of that prayer, praying without ceasing. And we're going to talk more about that in a bit. But it's their disciplines of prayer they, that provide patterns for attending to God throughout the day. Um, I, there are a lot of days I go all day without thinking about God being present around me. And that's something I want to change. Um, and I don't like that. Uh, part of it is I, I've grown up in a, a I've grown up in a Christianity. It's not just our tradition, but in a Christianity that has said uh, God is in the heavens and we're here on earth, and never the two shall meet. And so we we've created prayer practices that are okay. Well, God's way off in the distance, so maybe we need to speak louder or talk often, or maybe. Prayer is, and I've actually heard Christians say this, that prayer is really just a therapeutic practice for us because God has already decided what he's going to do. And that, oh man, that one, that one bothers me a bit. But this is a, a disciplines of prayer provide patterns for attending to God throughout the day. Uh, Henry Nowen, one of my, one of my favorites, uh, says that to pray is to descend with the mind into the heart and there stand before the face of the Lord, ever present, all seeing within you. Um, another way of saying this is when we believe that God put his spirit on us and in us, we are never far from God. 
because God is within. And so um, prayer is an, is an active movement from going from our mind into our heart and standing before God. Um, I really love the way he taught. And Henry now has got a thousand great quotes on prayer. Um, so prayer is also, uh, prayer is sustained less by duty than by a desire to connect and grow in intimacy and communion with God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Um, I, I put this one on there because, okay, I, if I prayed for many, many years, if I prayed, it was, okay, this is something I need to do as a Christian. Um, and then it became, okay, I'm a minister. I need to know a little bit more about prayer or I'm going into ministry. And this idea of prayer being a duty, something that you just need to fit into your schedule. Um, we're going to talk about some simple prayer practices that help us develop this, deny, or this desire to connect and grow in intimacy and communion with God. Um, prayer also gets us up and moves us into the world. So, you know, we, a lot of times when people think about monks, uh, you know, monastics living off in their monasteries, we think, oh man, how do they, how do they spend all of their time in prayer? You know, Christianity is about, you know, changing the world and about, you know, going out. And so how can you pray all day? You got to actually get out and do something. And, and the belief is that prayer actually moves you into reconciliation and practices practices of reconciling the broken world. And so prayer actually gets you up and moves, uh, moves you into the world. And, and that's coming out of the monastic tradition that out of their time of prayer, they then go and engage more deeply into the world because first they prepared themselves in prayer. Uh, and then finally, uh, prayer brings the world around us into our heart and into the throne room of God. So uh, another way of saying this differently is when we pray for the world, uh, the world that we're going to go into, we first bring people and situations into our heart as part of us. Uh, and I, this, in, this idea, and this is something I've been wrestling with today quite a bit, is prayer is when you pray for someone, you're actually connecting them to you because you're taking them within you to take them into the throne room of God. Um, and, you know, what are the implications of praying for your enemies when you take them before God in your heart first? Uh, how does that change uh, how you pray? How does that change how you see them? Because when you, when you stand with them before the throne room of God, uh, you're no longer trying to transform them, but to bring them into the presence of God that brings transformation. And so you're no longer trying to win. You're trying to introduce them to God. And there's, there's a lot more to say about that. And prayer, there's lots of great books on prayer that talk about these things. Um, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, there's a book called The Way of, the, of a Pilgrim, uh, a, and the Pilgrim Continues His Way. Uh, this is about a Russian peasant. It's written in Russian. Uh, they've translated it a hundred different times in English. Um, and the basic story, I think it was written in the 1800s. Uh, the basic story is this Russian pilgrim was sitting in a service and he heard the preacher say uh, from 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. And so he went to the priest afterwards and said, what does it mean to pray without ceasing? And so I'm going to ask you this. So this is the participation portion again. Um, what does that mean to you to pray without ceasing? Who wants to go first? Greg, you're unmuted, so I'm going to let you go first. All right. Um, I see that as a running conversation throughout your day, uh, it's a constant conversation, but you're aware that God is always there and he's open to you. Mm. Um, or, you know, it, it's a lifestyle thing. Uh, brush your teeth every day, you pray every day. Maybe it's that type of thing, but I, 
to me, it's more of a running conversation, I think. Hmm. Okay. I like that. Uh, who else? What, what is, when you hear pray without ceasing, what does that mean? Uh, according to Barbara, for Stephen, that means his eyes are closed all day. He can't pray without his eyes closed. It's one of the awkward <laughs> things to assume. I can't tell if they're laughing or if they hate me right now. So, um, uh, Who else? What, what does it mean, pray without ceasing? Ryan? Yes. Um, I, for me, it means that I'm always ready to talk to God. And when I get in a frame of mind where I'm not ready to talk to God, that it bothers me. Uh, mm. Because I, it, I, I want to be, I hope I am in a loving relationship with God and in a respectful fear in a good way relationship with God. But I always want to be, be ready to not just talk to him, but to hear what he's trying to tell, what he is telling me, hmm. uh, to just be ready to receive, not just God, I want God do this, God protect. Thank you, God. I want to always be ready to, to see what it is he's showing me or telling me, hear what he's telling me. So I, I'm, Greg and I have talked about this a lot. So what he said, I totally, I totally agree with. Just that constant knowing that he's that God is with us, and He's ready to talk to us, and He's ready to hear from us. Excellent. And anybody else? Pray, pray without ceasing. Then we'll get back to our way of a pilgrim. I I always feel like um, he doesn't need a lot of words. Mm. Uh, like. Uh, I think of that pray without ceasing as God help me with this mm. and that's enough. And he knows what I need. So you're going to love tonight's lesson then. <laughs> yeah, See, that's, we're getting, okay. yeah. We're getting to that simple prayer. Um, and I've, I've heard people say, and this just breaks my heart. Um, I'll ask, and actually I hear a lot of women say this. Um, I'll ask one of our, our ladies to pray and they'll say, I don't pray well. I'll say, that's not true. You're talking to your father and he loves to hear from you. And it's this, uh, or they say, well, my, my prayers aren't pretty. It's like, you know, anytime Jesus talks about pretty prayers, it's often bad. It's normally the, uh, you know, you're being elaborate and showy, but it's that simplicity of prayer. Uh, how beautiful would it be if someone just got up and said, Lord, thank you and then sat down. And that was the prayer that we just offer thanks to God. So there's, yeah, merely that beautifully said as always. Um, so let's, let's keep talking about a way of the, the way of a pilgrim. And if you want to borrow this book from me, uh, I probably won't be reading it anytime soon. So feel free to, uh, to hit me up for that. So the way of the pilgrim, he, he goes to the priest and says, okay, what does it mean to pray without ceasing? And the priest couldn't tell him. And so he went from church to church to church looking for what does it mean to pray without ceasing? And finally, a priest told him to pray the prayer of Jesus or the, what's called the Jesus prayer, which is um, also called the breath prayer. And we're going to talk about that here shortly. But the Jesus prayer is basically... Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And, and the priest told him, pray that a thousand times today. And so he did that, and he did it for like a week. And, and I'm, I'm probably butchering the story a little bit. But basically, he did that for you know, a week or, or so, a thousand times a day. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And he did it as he breathed in, Lord Jesus, Son of God, breathed out. Have mercy on me, a sinner. And, and then he went back to the priest, and the priest said, now do it 10,000 times a day. And the, the point is that basically, as he breathed, he was praying to the point that simply recognizing his breath brought him into this realization of Jesus is Lord, he is the Son of God, and I am a sinner in need of mercy. And just breathing that prayer over and over again, as though it became his breath, 
it transformed him into a rightful place of humility in the presence of God. And so it became, uh, and I think this is the part where it says, and, and the pilgrim continues his way because he learns that uh, when, you, when you journey into the presence of God, you then continue in the presence of God. And so um, here's, here's a quote from the book. Uh, it says, he said, and this is talking about the prayer practice. He says, take a seat in solitude and silence. Bend your head, close your eyes, and breathing softly in your imagination, look into your own heart. Let your mind, or rather your thoughts, flow from your head down to your heart and say, while breathing, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Whisper these words gently and say them in your mind. Discard all other thoughts. Be serene, persevering, and over and over. Um, the uh, the the G, what's called the Jesus Prayer. Um, oh, hi, mom. Sorry, I just muted you. I was I heard whistling. Um, the Jesus Prayer was was popularized by a guy named John Chrysostom in the fifth century or fourth or fifth century, and it's there's a number of variations of it, but it's called uh, basically Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, and it's based off of you know this passage in Matthew chapter nine verse twenty seven. As Jesus went out from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, "Have mercy on us, Son of David." Um, and you find variations of this, and really you see it all over the gospel. And so you actually see it in places like Matthew 15, Matthew 20, Mark chapter 10. That's you know blind Bartimaeus, uh, the blind man who who hears that Jesus is on the road and yells out, "Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me!" And he goes running to him. Uh, Luke 17, Luke 18. Uh, you hear this this simple phrase, "Have mercy on us." over and over and over and over again throughout the Gospels. And so uh, John Chrysostom, um, in some of his letters, he wrote about this type of praying, that it's just a simple form of prayer that says, Lord, we need your mercy. And, and there are different prayers that have formed out of this um, that's simply just called breath prayer. So I want to I wanna get back to our um, interactive portion and uh, I want to ask you, what do you love about breathing? This should be a sim. This should be a simple question. But what do you love about breathing? And I'm gonna those who have not answered yet. So you know, Greg, I'm gonna go ahead and mute you and Dion. Um, so I'm looking at the uh, Fergosis and the flats. You know, what what do you love about breathing? It's satisfying. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Breathing is satisfying. The alternative isn't great. <laughs> what else do you love about breathing? I, sorry, I was just going to say it, it relaxes you. Yeah, relaxes you. breathing should relax you. If you don't have to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's something that, can you imagine if you had to think about breathing? That'd be exhausting. Do it in your sleep. How about that? You do it. You can do it in your sleep. Phenomenal. <laughs> um, there's a lot of studies on breathing. Um, there's, oh man, I wasn't even thinking about this earlier, but uh, there's a book I have not read, but I hear it's wonderful by... Um, a guy named Thich Nhat Han. He's a Buddhist monk, um, and the whole book is about just how wonderful it is to breathe. And it's like okay, <laughs> but I've heard I've heard great things about it. But but breathing is a wonderful thing, and there's a lot of studies um, about if you are uh, hyper, if you're worked up, if you're anxious, if you just breathe and you focus on your breath, if you think about your breath. Um, and you just breathe deeply, it'll actually calm you and slow you down. And so we're going to talk about breathing. Uh, here's a couple of uh, observations. You not only 
is it a great thing? And it's kind of nice. You can't live on one breath. You have to keep breathing. And so, the, you know, the spiritual uh, metaphor here is you can't live on one breath of God. Um, God is the oxygen of our soul, and, and we need to breathe him in all day long. Uh, the practice, uh, to practice breath prayer, ponder the nearness of God. Settle deeply into the truth that Christ is in you. And again, God's not off in the distance. God is in you in the Holy Spirit. And so that's something uh, I feel like we've got to rediscover in our Christian practices and our Christian walk. Uh, Christ is in you. Um, or as it says in Acts 17, it is in him that we live and move and have our being. And so how do you exist with God as though he is the very air you breathe? And so this is the idea of breath prayer. Uh, so breath prayer is, this is kind of the process, um, and you can adapt this to different ways uh, that you need to focus on, different things you need to focus on. But the first step is to begin with the biblical name of God that is meaningful to you. And I'm going to give some examples of this. Um, and then the second is follow the name with a word or phrase expressing your deep God-given desire. Three, connect the prayer to your breathing. So you breathe in, Lord Jesus, Son of God, breathe out, have mercy on me, a sinner. So if you need to focus on having, you know, the, you know, just resting in the mercy of God or basking or abiding in the love of God, saying, Lord Jesus, Son of God, as you breathe in and then breathe out, you love me as your child. Um, and then you just throughout the day, you return to this practice. So you find yourself feeling anxious, breathe prayer. Um, so here's some examples of this. So you breathe in, Lord Jesus, breathe out, have mercy on me. And, and there's different ways to think about this. As you kind of meditate on the practice, you're, what does it mean to breathe in God and to breathe out your need as prayer? Uh, or in the Jesus prayer, have mercy on me as sinner, you breathe in the reality of God to then breathe out your sinfulness and your need for mercy. You're thinking about how you're breathing in the goodness and breathing out what's bad. You got you to gotta keep going through that process. So you have um, prayers like, Abba, I belong to you. Healer, speak the word and I shall be healed. Shepherd, bring home my lost son. So that, you know, that's a practice that you can use, um, especially if you're praying, praying for someone. You can even insert names there. Uh, Holy one, keep me true. Lord, here I am. Jesus, have mercy. Um, and you actually, when you open your eyes and you kind of recognize this, these types of prayers, you actually see them all over scripture. It may not talk about breath prayer per se, but you do recognize that these short prayers are all over scripture. Um, the, there's one prayer in particular in, in 1 Corinthians that it's called, um, the Greek word is Maranatha, and you actually hear people say that. Um, I mean, you've probably heard it before, but you didn't know what was being said. And it's simply said, Lord, come quickly. Uh, every time there's a tragedy, um, that's something I, I, I come back to. Lord, come quickly. Bring reconciliation. Bring the resurrection. Make these wrong things right. Every time there's a shooting, every time there's a school shooting, every time there's uh, racial injustice, every, you know, fill in the blank, Lord, come quickly. And it's, so these are, these are prayers that you can just bring into your breath and breathe them throughout the day. Um, okay, so that's, that's one major prayer practice, breath prayer. That's the one I'm going to challenge you to kind of wrestle with this week. Uh, just start your day. How, how would your day change if you started with five minutes of just breathing? Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Uh, when I did this with a group of people from our church uh, this last year, uh, one, one person in the group was really bothered by this focus on being a sinner. And so they, they adapted the prayer 
and said, Lord Jesus, Son of God, you love me as your son. And I, I recognized um, that's what they needed. And so that may be what you need to focus on. So breath prayer is taking, taking one of these or even writing your own, but spending the first five minutes of your day breathing that prayer and just throughout the day, recognize your breath uh, and, and pause and just breathe prayer. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to two other practices, and I'm going to point you to some resources at the end. Uh, but that, this is the main prayer I want you to, to kind of play around with this week. And then I look forward to hearing from you next week. Uh, the next one's called Mantra Prayer, and it, it's kind of the same principles. You're basically taking one scripture and just repeating it over and over and over again, a scripture that you need to take into your heart to be transformed and um, say it over and over again. Uh, one cool practice with uh, mantra prayer that I, I've enjoyed over the years is uh, be still and know that I am God. And you just say it very slowly, be still and know that I am God. And then you drop the last word and say, be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I. Be still and know, and just do this very slowly until you get to the end and you just be. And, and this, this type of prayer is to kind of help you just take scripture into your heart and uh, focus on a prayer that you need to focus on. And so that's, that's mantra prayer. Uh, if you want to practice that one throughout the week, go for it. Um, the last one is called centering prayer. I'm going to say a few things about it real quick that this kind of prayer depends very little on words. So Mary Lee, this is, you know, all over this, this is very few words in this one. Um, you do not give God information about all you, all your needs, projects, ideas, programs, plans, or agendas. You sit in the presence of God and give him your undivided love and attention. The only word that is spoken during this prayer is one word you have chosen to continually bring your drifting attention back to God. Um, so this, um, this practice is basically you pick a word um, that you, and this is something for you to explore on your own. Uh, this isn't something to do in a week, but you you create a rhythm in your mind. You actually are creating new pathways in your mind, new path, pathways of thinking that you select one word that is going to be your word for centering prayer. Um, sometimes it's good to pick one for a year. Uh, sometimes it's good to pick one for a season that may last multiple years. Right now, uh, my word for centering prayer has been uh, content. And basically you're just... Uh, you're emptying your mind. And this isn't like the Eastern practices where you're emptying, emptying your mind to then just be empty. It's you're releasing your thoughts and distractions to be attentive to God. And that's completely different than Eastern meditation practices. This is, uh, but that word is supposed to help center you. And so as you find your, your thoughts drifting off in a direction, you just say, peace or mercy, or whatever the word is that, you, um, that you've done that. And you do this uh, as, a, as an ongoing practice so that when you find yourself uh, where your mind is just jumping all over the place, that when you've developed this word and you just start praying that one word, it actually recenters you and brings you back to the presence of God. So this is one that takes a lot of practice. I am not good with it. Uh, I was good with it for a while and I got out of the habit and I'm trying to redevelop this habit in my life. So this is something that, that takes a lot of practice, but it is well worth it. Um, two books, both by uh, Cynthia Bargulet, or I'm not even, I'm butchering her last name. Uh, but she is a phenomenal writer on this practice. Uh, the book on the right, Centering Prayer and in Inner Awakening, you can get free through the library app and it's, uh, it's on audio. So if you wanna to listen to it, um, a lot of conviction in, she, and she, she explains it in a way that makes you wanna actually do it. So that's, um, that's the last one.